tell you we are going to shame on this episode, Paul. I'm doing it in the intro. Is is Microsoft Edge? I am not happy about what I found on my feed last night, Paul. Throughout, we are starting off an angry rant about Edge. Wow. I know. This is coming from an unexpected quarter. Please continue. Uh, Microsoft is now bundling buy now pay later services into Edge. I'm sorry. What? No. Thank you. Thank you. So what? they put this out. Uh, let me find. I didn't even pull my my, my so Twitters because I was so. <sighs> Microsoft put out a post on November fifteenth that they're going to be starting to include buy now pay later services. This was written on. Oh God, dude, no! What it says. I... Here's the title of the blog post. And I was like, maybe I'm just reading this wrong and this is like a thing you can install if you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nope. Title of the blog post. Introducing Buy Now, Pay Later in Microsoft Edge or BNPL is coming. It is already available on, uh, it's coming, I think, to Canary and Dev Channels and will be available by default to all users of Microsoft Edge Release 96. Here's what bugs me about this. As you were telling the story, I thought, you know, it's funny, I didn't see this. So... Well, nobody saw. I will go they to the Microsoft it. Edge blog and and see. It's, no, it's not there. Okay, so maybe it's in the Windows Experience blog or something like that. No, it's not there. So I did a Google search for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and it's in Tech Community. Yep. What, the f what I? Wow. Now there's like there's two really different thoughts here because parts of the world and even in the U.S., buy now, pay later services are a big deal. That is not the argument that I am upset with. If you use the services, whatever, that's fine, great, I'm happy for you. The problem here is that Edge is a browser. It is designed to browse the internet. It is not a shopping store. It is a means to get yeah. to shopping stores. And this service, whether or not you're, you like it, is now part this of is, the browser. Um, here's This is... This is classic slippery, slippery slope material. Microsoft wants to differentiate its browser from Edge or from Chrome and whatever else. Yeah, okay. Microsoft is building things in. This is like uh, ads in Windows 10, you know, because I, I can complain about them and you can complain about this. And some people go, hold on, hold, hold, hold on a second. I like this. I like that it's in there because now I don't have to install anything. I don't even have to know this thing exists. Like it's just there for me. Like that's useful, you know, mm -hmm. but the the flip side of this aside from the fact that this i i would argue that buy now pay later is evil or at least borderline evil but whatever is maybe the one of the tent pole problems with the country we live in but whatever this is the teamsification of edge right mm -hmm. every time they add another feature add another feature add another feature like at some point the adding of value becomes this gigantic infrastructure that is not the browser you're talking about, which is like thin and lightweight and gets you there really quickly. It's like this over bloated mm -hmm. thing with all crap everywhere. And yikes. Yep. Yikes. So let me just ask you then, your primary issue with this, is it that buy now, pay later is terrible? Or that is it just, this is yet another feature that people should optionally install of their choice? And it's not be there a little the bit browser. of A and B. Yeah, um, because there are, yeah, they, like my 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 brain goes. It's like okay, buy now, pay later. If that's what you want to do, and it's it's reasonable for you, fine. I'm not going to tell people how to control their financial aspects of their lives. The only thing that's missing here is like the next step in this is a payday loan service. It's like oh, you can't afford that? Well, just give us a checking account. We'll deduct twenty five dollars a week, and here's a thousand dollars. Like it's the slippery slope is where does this end? And right. why is this baked into the browser? This is something, and they even pointed out, they say usually BNPL is offered on specific e-commerce websites like Target and Walmart. But now Microsoft partners th with third-party Zip, previously QuadPay, because they're a renowned trusted name of business, to offer BNPL payments at the <coughs> browser level. And for any purchases between $30 oh. and $5 and $1,000 through Microsoft Edge can be split into four installments over six weeks. Over six weeks, that doesn't even make sense. It should be over four months. Well, okay, so I should funny say that. I'll, I'll let me. I'll make a comment about that in a second. But I, I you know, back in the '80s and the '90s, um, the thing we had that was like this was like rent to buy, and rent to buy was a terrific way to um, spend twenty three hundred dollars on a six hundred dollar couch. Yep. Um, but you get into a weird area here where, like, you know, at a theoretical level. I would argue, you know, pe what people should be doing is buying things they can't afford, right? Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, I have taken advantage of things like, 
well, Apple or Samsung or whoever offers like a zero um, percent interest if you qualify and you can spread payments out over time. That's sort of like this, right? And then to your point of, I think you said six weeks. I was just looking at someone uh, going back and forth about the Pixel thing, and uh, someone had talked about the quality of the uh, the recent um, Galaxy S twenty one camera system, blah blah blah, whatever. So. I was kind of looking at that, uh, not because I would ever buy such a thing now, but you know maybe we'll see what the S22 looks like in three months or whatever. And Samsung, I, I've never seen this before because you know if you go to Apple, for example, you can pay in cat, you can pay full, like you buy a thousand dollar phone, it's thousand bucks today, or you can pay over, I think it's two years on Apple Card, you qualify for this credit card thing, and you pay, you know whatever it works, whatever that's twenty four thirty two, whatever it is, a bucks a month for two years. Okay, fine. Samsung offered. The way a way to split it, it was bi-weekly, and I, because I had priced it with a um, like a trade-in just to see what it looked like, it was like six hundred dollars. I could pay six hundred dollars up front. I could pay some small amount of money over two or three years. I don't remember what that was. And then it was bi-weekly, and so every two weeks for four weeks, I would pay one hundred and fifty dollars. And I was like, huh, that's actually. I could see people wanting to do that. You know, spread it out a little bit, right? You get paid every two weeks, maybe. But yeah, it's it. That's the thing. It's a, it, that's why I said slippery slope in the beginning because on the surface it's like okay, well, it this helps people buy things that maybe they need, but I think it also helps people buy things they don't need. And if you do too much of this, mm -hmm. this is just bad financial decisions. I, uh, the thing that's make, missing it, from it, here, which it, I looked it, through their blog post, uh, typically for those who aren't aware how these services make a lot of money is let's say you accidentally miss a payment by a day or two. There's right. an interest penalty conveniently not listed here because the the appeal is well, like it's four payments zero interest six weeks. this is the this is the money thing like yeah. um this is if you are uh, good about making or you know if, if you keep on top of things there are things that other people maybe shouldn't do that you can do that are fine you know um like i know that i'm gonna make you know i'm not gonna default on an iphone payment or whatever it is i'm doing and and get charged extra interest or whatever um, but unfortunately, these types of deals don't just apply to people who can handle the financial mm -hmm. aspect of it. They appeal to people like, wow, I can't afford an iPhone, let's say, um, but I'll do this thing to get now I have this thousand dollar thing I never should have bought. And now I can't afford the payments. And it's just I hate to, it just makes me it's it, it's cringeworthy um, when you think about the ramifications, potential ramifications for people. Don't call it bloat. Call it margin. And then it sounds a lot better. That's well, yeah. Don't call, it, don't call it. It is bloat. Uh, it see, is. That's the pro that's my problem with it. Like I, if you think about the fundamental value proposition of Microsoft Edge, it's a very good one. It is Google Chrome without any of the Google tracking, privacy invasions. Uh, actually, let's end it there. I mean, because Google has its own functionality. Whatever, it's fine. You know, instead of signing in with a Google account, you sign in with a Microsoft account. Do I trust Microsoft more than Google? Yes, I do. Uh, but as they've added features, you know, you kind of think, well, maybe that should be a, an extension. Maybe part of the first boot experience for this browser, when you install it, they advertise the different things you can add to it, and that it's not something you just get. Um, that would be how I would frame this. And I, and as time goes on, and they add more and more stuff, I think fundamentally, I, this I agree with you. It's both A and B. Um, I don't like this rent to buy style thing. I'll just call it that. And I really don't like them bloating Internet Explorer. Thank you for giving me something extra to write about today. I hadn't even heard of this. This is horrific. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of exploitation, which is my favorite topic, especially child exploitation, I forgot to mention to this to you. Uh, over the weekend, my daughter came up to me and she's like, Daddy, can we buy notepad.exe? We use it at school. Cool. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, let me look into it. If you could just clean the living room in your bedroom, nice. then then I'll see. And that's exactly she she cleaned it. So apparently, what they're doing is they use Notepad and for keyboarding, they give kids like it, it's an instruction sheet of ASCII art about how to use different things to make like a pig or a house or whatever drawing and using keyboard text. <laughs> but it, this is how they teach them non traditional keyboard or letter input such as like a, a hashtag or a parentheses so that they can learn where it is on the keyboard. It's like, oh, that's okay. actually pretty smart. So it's like she cleaned this whole thing. I dug out an old laptop. I'm like, there you go, notepad.exe. Never said your dad doesn't do anything for you. So you just reminded me of a story, um, <laughs> which I think you will enjoy. Uh, <laughs> we were in uh, D.C. over the weekend, 
and we were walking uh, in an area where they're actually kind of, you know, DC doesn't have like skyscrapers, but you know, you can get in between the buildings. It's colder cause it's like shadowy and everything. And we're kind of you're walking through there and, and, I, I laughed out loud and, and Stephanie says, what's going on? I said, look up there. And there was a balloon or yeah. a red balloon <laughs> go, wafting its way up between the buildings. And she says, why do you think that's funny? And I said, because somewhere Brad's daughter is crying and he's making a video of it. <laughs> She's like, I, she doesn't understand. So it, that picture of my daughter crying as the balloon left and my, yep. the fact that I took a picture of it and I, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Not, not helping yeah. her out. Should be in the Louvre because it is a picture of raw, pure emotion of watching mm-hmm. just your hopes and dreams fly away. That's how you can... I just, but to me, the interesting thing is that your reaction was not to console your daughter. Because <laughs> I, I did the same thing with my own daughter, not with a balloon, but uh, when she was having a meltdown one year. It is an awesome photo of her just losing it. And it's, it's just every once in a while, it just comes up on the screen and I just. It's borderline child abuse that I laugh every time I see it, but I, I do. If Paul and I ever go on a rage and just take out half the population, like you could probably point it back to like these types of photos. I'm like, look, he has no empathy. He's just a jerk. Was, yeah, the neighbors were like, no, I, I, they, was, they were quiet. I, uh, I never saw this coming. <laughs> Did you ever see this photo of him laughing at his daughter in a time of need? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, there's a new Windows 11 media player app. This was been kind of shown off and leaked a little bit actually over the past month. Yeah. Maybe, but... So the interesting thing to me is it's Groove. It's obviously it's just the Groove app, but yeah. it also does video. But it's only obviously it's only for local playback. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that they added video to it is kind of interesting because the movies and TV app works fine for that. And I've often questioned whether that app would survive. And obviously, what that means is they would get rid of that underlying service. Um. I don't think it makes sense for Microsoft to have a movies and TV service and not have music, right? Like, I just don't, why would, yeah, I, I don't have some of it. Plus, you know, at one point, very briefly, remember, they got into um, ebooks. I mean, I mm-hmm. think you could make an argument for the whole enchilada, the ebooks, audiobooks, podcasts, you know, what? It's like you're either doing this stuff or you're not, you know? So I kind of wrote that as a little warning. Like, I wonder if this isn't, the first step to this thing I always thought was going to happen. And then people are like, well, you know, what about all the content people bought? I'm like, well, there's an, actually, there's an easy workaround to it. Now they have this app. You could use it for that, I guess, maybe. Or maybe you just use movies anywhere and the, your stuff transfers somewhere else. I don't know. But you yeah. never should have bought it from Microsoft, I think, is the real lesson here. But You know what they need to bring back in this app? Remember those animations? I think it was Windows XP when you played music. And yeah. they were like yeah, yeah, yeah. psychedelic beats or whatever like the visualization we need those back visualizations yeah i think those are that's like an itunes thing too i'm sure that's where they oh yeah that, that was there or too. winamp before that right but winamp. right i think that was one of the deals like you could have it in a different window even it went up you know could have little stupid windows everywhere but um windows media player whatever version that is now 12 or something i don't know is still in there i mean i i wouldn't be surprised to discover that little piece of junk from the past still does visualizations i don't know hmm. 